The following program is brought to you by Caltech. When I was in elementary school, there always seemed to be some like, authority figures that came up, counselors, teachers, parents, who came up to me, gave me a little ribbon, and it said, reach for the stars. So I got the ribbon, and I went back home, and I sat on my lawn chair at night. And I was like, you know, trying to reach up for the stars. And I realized, man, the world is so big compared to yourself. A little later, I noticed a small ant crawling on the armchair of my, or the arm of my lawn chair. And I think, in that ant's perspective, I must be so huge, so big. And I'm thinking, man, the world is so big in front of me with the stars and the sky. And if you put yourself in the ant's perspective, you think the world must be so, so, so big. But if you keep on going smaller and smaller, let's say from organ system to organ to tissue to cell to atom to subatomic particles, you realize that the world is comprised of these tiny, tiny, tiny elements that basically control or affect our environment. Nanotechnology. The study of materials at this atomic and molecular scale. It's all around us. You can pull your phone out of your pocket. In front of you, it's nanotechnology. Transistors that are first fabricated on a chip, a silicon wafer. Thousands, maybe even millions, can be put on the single silicon wafer, which can be shipped off and then manufacture it into a phone that you use. But when you turn on your phone, you don't really realize what's happening inside the phone itself. It's like magic. You know, you don't really see it, but it works. It's wonderful. Nanotechnology has many, many, many more applications, expanding even past your phone. Uh, it has a lot of biome biomedical uh, applications, energy research applications, even more, even more electronic applications. But you know, there is some uncertainty as to the future of nanotechnology. There have been studies showing that nanotechnology could be toxic to humans. But let's not let that uncertainty deter us in trying to advance technology to better our lives. Instead of you know, trying out nanotechnology on sort of biomedical research, why don't we try it on energy applications, solar cells. Solar cells can use all sorts of nanotechnology, and they can, on one single sort of chip, and it can power a whole village. If you imagine, like, a, a filter, uh, you can use nanotechnology to perhaps filter out all the uh, saline water around oceans so you can make it drinkable, and countries can have drinkable water. Nanotechnology is all around us. It's you know, in front of you, behind you, inside, outside. It can basically modify, affect our whole entire environment. So instead of reaching for the stars, why don't we reach deeper, deeper in? And when someone tells you something like, well, let's think outside the box, why don't we think, think a little deeper in the box, so deep that we actually change the box itself and make it help ourselves in the future. Thank you.